well. I thought Donny Housen was yeah. so pivotal um, yeah. to us when, when we were in that era. And um, some of the stuff that, that Johnny used to do, left foot, right foot, you wouldn't know what foot it was at times. And um, he probably played uh, the number 10 role when I think when Jermaine left um, with, with, with Luciano and, and obviously me and um, me and Max on the wings. And I, I felt as if Johnny Housen and even seeing Johnny leave, it, it just felt like, you know, that was probably at an end of an era because he epitomised everything to do with what it was to be a Leeds fan. Um, Yorkshire lad, R Richard Naylor, Ben Parker, those type of lads were, Fraser Richardson when I first joined, those lads, they knew, you knew what it meant to um, play for Leeds, but Johnny Housen leaving, I felt as if it was probably the end of that mm. group and it was like, right, okay, if they're going to come back, they probably need to rebuild um, and that's what they've done. Phil, see, see on that when you when you, you know when we listen to the guys saying about leaving and everything, did did the Leeds fans just come to the, the stage where they accepted it? When you look back and you know your, your Woodgates, your Boyers, your James Milners, and people that have all left the football club, and I know it was for different different reasons, but did the Leeds fans just accept that? Listen, they're going to come here for a couple of years and leave. That's it. I, I don't think it was the accepting that it was going to be a short period of time. I think it was accepting that they understood why they were going. Like it, it, it's different with somebody like Alan Smith who went over to Man United, and that that kind of wounds never never been healed. But it was really difficult. I mean, I Rob will remember this. I was down in Cornwall, um, covering the, the preseason tour uh, under Warnock, and there was a lot of talk about Norwich coming in for Rob and, and wanting to sign him. And then there was this open training session on what was just a random field down there that loads of fans came but Warnock you know had his own way with pre-season and at the end of that I remember him saying to Rob right you get in the car with me and and the two of you drove off and I'm pretty sure the next day the, the deal was done and at that point you just couldn't feel a team building particularly you couldn't see that side having much chance of getting out of the league and it is the case that I think everybody sympathised with them they understood why Jermaine would want to go to Everton they understood why Johnny decided that he'd go to Norwich same, same with Rob why Grado wanted to go back to France and ultimately when Becchio went and that was another you know another of the, they used to joke about Leeds being a feeder club for Norwich but you know it was another, another of those transfers it was just a case of well why would they want to stay you know if I, I remember Eddie Gray saying to me about Rob he said, I'd have been disappointed with him if he didn't want to go and if he didn't want to go to Norwich and play in the Premier League because he should be trying to make the best of himself. And, you know, Eddie always says to me, Rob, that he thinks of you as the best player that's gone through there since they were they were relegated. And his attitude was just, if if this club is not going forward and, and if it doesn't look like it's going to achieve much in the next few years, what what's the point in sticking around? That's... Um... Obviously, just to, just hearing you speak about Eddie Gray, I, I think um, when, when I first joined, when I remember back, him and Peter Lorimer were on the first ones in the phone, and mm. these they'd been my dad's like heroes, watching them, um, Scottish like legends. Boy, do you know that? And and just how nice they were. And, and Jermaine, you'll know as well. Like even when you turned up match day, there was a lot of ex players, and I, I felt that as if like this is like a, such a big club, but it's such a family club because all the ex players that had been through the doors, they were all still in the stadium and, and you could see them and, and they were all right about the lounges and I just felt this is this is this is incredible you know so it was um it was a real special so feeling they see on that see on that how that, that that's what makes you know a club the culture and everything when you're looking about and you know when you've seen people winning things and, and and you know as you say your dad's hero but then you know you're looking to them saying oh my dad's hero but they've delivered for this football club. You know yeah. leads when you when you're looking at the size of football club it is and I'm going to ask the two of you this year. Was there a pressure wearing that jersey? I mean, I know there's football clubs you're under pressure to perform every week, but was there an ex was there an extra um, bit of pressure because of what the club had done in the past? Yeah, Jamie, can answer that for. <laughs> for me, there, there was a massive, massive pressure. Um, first and foremost, because it's Leeds United, because it's a one city team, and because they're they're as big as they are, and they have been. Um, European champions, you know, played against AC Milan at the San Siro in the Champions League semi-final. You know, you for me personally, I looked at the history of the club, the players, the past players, the the past achievements and accolades. And then when I got my when I first got the number uh, the number nine shirt, I looked at all the players that had worn that shirt prior to myself, and to see the success that the the majority, the vast majority of those number nines had the type of players they were, the type of goal scorers they were. I wanted to to make sure 
I did that shirt number proud. I wanted to make sure I did that shirt proud. I wanted to make sure that I made all the fans proud and my family. And with that comes a huge pressure. And also, as, as Snod mentioned there, when you, you turn up to the training ground, you see the ex-pros. When you turn up to the Ellen Road, you see the ex-pros. So you've got these guys who you're, you're not only looking up to, but you, you respect on such a molecular level. You don't want to feel like you're doing an injustice or a, or a disservice to that shirt number, to that shirt that you're wearing. You know, you've got, you've got the weight of the world on your shoulders. But that being said, when you do start playing and the fans see that you're giving everything or you're offering something completely different that's, that's eye-catching or, or um, the fans enjoy seeing, they will back you to the hills. Um, and that's, that's something that fortunately we had in, in our, our team snods. We had that in abundance. We had players that were, were willing to run through brick walls. We had um, the, class, the classy players who, who had technical, technically were unbelievable. You had goal scorers, you had brutes, you had all sorts of, a, a, a vast variety of players who worked amazingly as a unit. Yes, sir, Robert. Boy, do you know? Do you know what? See, the, the pressure. I always wondered how how actually you know uh, Jermaine dealt with the pressure because there was so much pressure on him. Because if he never scored, we 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 never we never won. Uh, him and him and Becky had that re- relationship. But um, the the pressure for for me, uh, I, I was I felt it as if I'd. I'll be honest with you. I came from Livingston, and I don't know if the like, Jermaine felt as or the boys I've spoke to Brad and that stuff. I was like a free spirit. I just went in there. Just a young kid. I never had ten pound in my pocket. Um, I went in there with, as I say, you run down how you and I coupe. That, that was not a pressure for me, boy. Day. That that was a joy. I felt like I'd won a um, like a competition, yeah. and I was in there. I'm not joking. You, and I thought this is this is class. I'm just going to just be myself. Exactly what I was. Cause I didn't know any different. I had to been educated a certain way. So when I went in there, I was just like the boy in the. Uh, in the park, just trying to take people on, try to create stuff, coming from a, a very rough background. And, and, and that's probably, Jermaine will tell you, probably scored a lot of his goals where he was thinking, no, I, I don't care what you're saying. I've got this. I know exactly what I'm capable of in believing in your ability. Could say, well, I've did this, you know, when when it's um, growing up in the streets of Glasgow, where you're getting kicked lumps out of you, and it's um, that's not that's not a pressure. That was the that was the best bit. Boy, he was been at Leeds and having the chance to you know shine and and build a relationship with the fans going forward. I know it's like a like a old cliche, but that that that's what it was for me. You know, it was a it was a special feeling, and it was something that I don't think you can teach the kids. Um, that's a it's a totally different world now where lads are dealing with a social media pressure um, and we never had that back then it was just a case of you know you're, you're playing for this wonderful club go out there and give it your all go and enjoy yourself go and express yourself and that's that's all I've done um, at Leeds and as I say to you when i done my knee um, well obviously I was away for Leeds so I, I had to adapt my full game I wasn't that I wasn't that type of player now it's a lot of different structures and I can't do certain mechanisms that Basically, that I was doing at Leeds, uh, where I was chop, 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 and, and doing different things, and I'm probably quite glad in a way because it's helped me adapt into the player arm. And I've, um, uh, but I always take it back to the sort of the, the 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 way they made me feel. They made me feel special, so it's a, it was a great feeling, no pressure. But you two, no, are told, Phil, Phil, Phil yeah. see, see, see on that. Did you just to to keep on that theme? Sorry for a minute. Did have you seen players come, um, you know, and become Leeds players that have crumbled, but with wearing that jersey? Hundreds of them. Yeah, no, I mean, you two both had total confidence. I I often have to remind myself that, like, Rob came down from Livingston and, and Jermaine came from um, Northern League with Wheelston because, like, Rob seemed to settle in straight away. It didn't seem to be any issue going from, from Livingston. And it, it was League One, but even so, it was quite apparent that, that you, were, you were good enough to play at a higher level. And, you know, like, Jermaine is, is as good a finisher as I've ever seen in the flesh. And, and every, everybody who played with him says exactly the same. Uh, but... It, it is a it is a great club and there is massive pressure. But I think the thing that has to be said is imagine trying to play in that pressure if you've got a substandard squad or if you've got a coach who isn't up to it or if you've got ownership issues or if you've got a budget that isn't appropriate. Um, I mean, I remember Richard Naylor saying to me once that when they were trying to get promoted in 2010, you weren't just fighting that season or fighting the teams around you. You were, you were trying to redeem 
you know, losing in the playoff final in 2006, getting relegated in 2004, all the seasons that wasted, you know, where it hadn't worked under McAllister, where it had been close and lost in the playoff final in 2008. So to be at that club when it's not properly structured, I think is an absolute nightmare. Um, to be at it now, where you've got Bielsa and you've got a proper plan, is is an absolute dream. Um, and there was just that one season for, for Robin Germain, which was 2009-2010. The, the following season, I think, Leeds actually played their best football under Grayson. But that, that season in League One was when they were the team. You know, everything everything went right. And in those circumstances, it's absolutely great. But I think that a lot of players who've passed through Leeds who probably didn't enjoy it. So in that, that season, the two years are here. How special was that promotion season for yourselves? Jermaine, on you, Omit. You know what? For me, it was it was it was huge. It was absolutely huge because I'd been involved in a in a relegation from the championship to League One um, while being promoted. That same season, I was out on loan from League One to the championship. Uh, I've been involved in a playoff final at um, Cardiff. We lost 3-0 to Watford. I'd been involved in a playoff semi-final over two legs and we lost to Millwall, which was painful. Uh, we lost 1-0 at, at Wembley Stadium at Doncaster um, for the playoff final as well. So I'd, I'd been involved in so many different playoff moments for Leeds and, and a relegation as well. That weight that came with it was, was, it was so heavy. It was so... It was, but it was so much of a relief when we finally did get the promotion we we desperately deserved, um, and it was just it was oh mate honestly it was it, it was unbelievable. We went through two seasons where the back end right at the end of the season we'd been deducted ten points to confirm our relegation from the championship, and the beginning of the very very next season we'd had a, a fifteen point deduction also. So. To know that literally everybody is against Leeds and everybody's got something negative to say about Leeds, to be able to finally put those feelings to bed, so to speak, in the manner in which we did it as well, at Ellen Road, the final game of the season, down to 10 men, you know, that, that, ah, oh, mate, the relief that I had after that game was, was, it was outrageous, absolutely outrageous. And yourself, so the, the um the 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 moment um Max gets uh, sent off, I think everyone is wanting to rip his head off. We're thinking we have <laughs> waited so long for this, and it was um it, it was incredible. But just just obviously um, touched on what Jermaine said that the relief because as soon as you arrived at Leeds, you knew like this is a sleeping giant. Like everybody within the city, within the club. It was like, right, okay, we'll take a little break for us, but we went back. It was always like we went back because obviously when I'm looking out for your old clubs and stuff, it's like, you know, you, you're disappointed. It's not happened and to eventually happen. It just feels right. It's Leeds is made for the Premier League. It's a, it's a Premier League club. And the, the, the thing is that I get more stick. I've, I've left Leeds. I don't know how long, right? And probably a lot of Leeds fans and stuff won't, won't know this or maybe Phil or Jermaine or whatever, you know. So every ground I go to, I get slaughtered for playing with Leeds. It's not the opposition like how or they do with Villa, right? And it's um that's standard, mate. That's standard. Yeah, that's standard. It's like we oh, take great. a corner. Even Man United still I'm thinking, oh, you you're worrying about you worrying about us, are you worrying about Leeds? So it's um it's uh, even Man United still when playing against them, they were crucifying me, you leads this, you leads that, you leads this. And it's once you play with them, it's um it sticks with you. So it's um that that I remember, I just remember, you know him uh, fine well, uh, my, my, all my, my mates were at the game and they ran on the park, but it, they were that they were that buzzing, I thought they were running to me, so I'm sitting there, Jermaine, like that, with my hands out, they ran by me and ran to all the other players, <laughs> they ran to all the other players and I'm going, what's just happened there? And then before you know it, you're getting um, everybody grabbing you and obviously yeah. I lost all my, my boots and stuff and different things because you are so fanatical and and obviously we had the promotion party and it, it was incredible. I just remember, I just it's something that will stick with me. I just remember my mate, um, like obviously meeting because he was there in a different club. We were away as a team, and then I met him, and he yeah. says, and I just I says to him, "Oh, you've been waiting outside long." 
And he says, no, I've been sitting smoking a fag with Paul Dickhoff. <laughs> he's, sitting <laughs> he's sitting inside with Dickie smoking a fag. And I was thinking, Jesus, like, like incredible, mate. Just, just obviously taught about it. And that's probably the way those lads now will be feeling moving for the championship up until yeah. the uh, to the Premier League. So, no, I think... Um, I think it's a listen. It's a it's a it's a special feeling, the promotion, boy, day, But it's 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 one that it was always for me that it had to happen. Leeds is a Premier League club all day. Yeah. They always uh, remember people as well who 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 do things at Leeds. You know, who actually aspire to something. Like I, I I've got got so much respect for that squad because you actually did it. You needed to win promotion, and you did it in the same way that that Bielsa has. And and the thing is that when when you cover them for so long. The players, like the players with the technical ability, and the players who 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 do something really stand. Oh, oh, Uncle Not the Fester, is it? Uncle Fester, get a picture of that Uncle Fester shot right there, Jermaine. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> I, the the thing it leads is that they do remember the players who who actually achieve something, and there's been so little of it over the past like 10, 15 years that that season really sticks out. And and I always say I've I've got loads of respect for that squad because they needed to get out of League One and they needed to win promotion, and and they did actually do it. Same as Bielsa's squad have, have done it now, and it's it's the quality players who stick out as well. Like Robin Jermaine, the, the technical ability was was just off the scale. Like I, there's two niche goals that I always think about with them, and if if you can find them online, have a look. One is Jermaine's lob against Hartlepool uh, when Leeds went back to zero points after the the 15 point deduction. Which it's one of those classic goals where if it was scored at the Bernabeu, you'd have watched it for for days and days afterwards. And I don't know whether Rob remembers this one, but on the day McAllister got sacked or on his last game, that volley down at MK Dons was just ludicrously good. And I was sat with the old press officer, Paul Jews, at the time, and we both said, because they're going to lose this game and because of what's going to happen afterwards, nobody's ever going to remember that. But it was it was such a such a good hit. Um, and like I say, that that's what sticks out in your head after so many years. Ah, bro. See, um, as Phil speaks there about goals, Jameer, I need to ask you, your your uh, your winner for Leeds at Old Trafford, that must have been special. It was, it was a, absolutely amazing. So, briefly, earlier on briefly, I, I said about when I first signed for Leeds United, I did a little bit of research on the history of the club, the, the past rivalries, the uh, number nines that have worn the, the, the shirt before me. So, I had, going into that game, I had a an idea, an inkling of the magnitude, the true magnitude of that game. It's not until walking through Lee City Centre, like I used to walk, I used to go for, for something to eat on the Thursday or the Friday in the City Centre, just to get an idea of, of the energy of the, the city, what the next game meant, etc, etc. And a lot of fans used to come up to me prior to the game, but this is before the, the Man United game. And just say, listen, back to that, have a good game, good luck, you know, go and enjoy it, score a couple of goals, blah, blah, blah. But the thing that, that really set the Man United game aside for me was walking through Leeds City Centre, exactly the same as what I'd normally do um, leading up to a, a match day. And instead of the fans doing the, the usual good luck, etc., you know, they were like, listen, this is this is the real deal, this is, this is the, the big rivalry, do not let us down. You will work as hard as you will work pass the message on to the boys and like the, the tension you could sense there was a, a a sort of tension that was that was linger lingering around uh, in the air and it's only when I when we walked out onto uh, to the pitch at Old Trafford before the game had even started once we got to the stadium we got to walk out of the, the tunnel which is in the corner um, by the Stretford end and then you the stadium opens up it's only once we got there and we saw the, the size of the stadium and knowing where our fans were going to be sitting, our fr- uh, fam- family, etc., are going to be sitting. And then you start hearing the little rumbles around the place, the, the crowd started to creep in. And, you know, once the game had kicked off, the nine and a half thousand, I think it was, Leeds fans, in my opinion, I, I couldn't hear any other fan in there. I couldn't hear the Man United fans. I, I could only hear the, the Leeds United fans. And that, that moment, literally the first 60 seconds of the game, kind of let me know, look, this is this is the real deal. This is going to be one of those moments that absolutely goes down in history for one reason or another. 
Bex, what, what, see when obviously you're talking there and, and you're still involved with the club and you can see how passionate obviously you are and, and probably we all are we, we speak about it. But what does the what does the future hold for Jimmy and Beckford? What, what you know what what's your plans going forward? I'm pushing to be Marcelo Bielsa's number two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how's your how's your Spanish? <laughs> um, my Spanish is not great. <laughs> nothing we could work on. No, I'm. Um, I've had a chat with uh, a few of the guys behind the scenes uh, about being a lot more hands-on role, uh, a lot more hands-on, possibly in in some sort of uh, ambassadorial role. Um, do bits in the community with the kids, and obviously as well, knowing uh, what my goal-scoring record has been at Leeds. Had a, I've had a chat with, a number of times with Patrick Bamford, with Tyler Roberts, with uh, a, a few of the guys that they've got in the ranks as well, and and just passing on my my knowledge and experiences that I've I've had and picked up along the way to to these guys to see if it can help and benefit them in any way. If it can, great. If it can't, then it's, there's no 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 harm no foul. Um, but just any and everything Leeds United based. Uh, I, I, I like to get involved with. I've been back to... to just coaching, just, just get into coaching. You know, I know Robert speaks highly of, of your finishing and, and, and like ex-strikers going back and working with the club. Is that something you would look at and say, you know, you feel as if you could... There's a coaching side that appeal to you? Only in terms of striking coach. Only in terms of goal scoring, striker, coach. Uh, in terms of the, the all-round gameplay and, and a number two, it's not really something that I'm actively pursuing i've got my ua for b i've got uh obviously playing experience etc but um if i'm honest i'm i'm really enjoying where i am uh, where i'm at the, at the moment i've got a vegan wellness company called supernova uh which is doing really well quite busy and then i've got all my my media duties etc as well which again i never it's something i never thought i'd, I'd ever be involved in ask phil every time he tried to get an interview from me i was um <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was just yeah, me. Straight down I thought that on was the just mobile. Me, yeah. <laughs> busy, busy, yeah. <laughs> so um it's something that I've I've definitely taken the, the, the role on board and I'm really enjoying it. It's um it's another opportunity for me to to be in and around the whole football industry and, and like obviously having had to retire through injury through no fault of my own, through no choice of my own, to to still be able to to be around the football club that I love, around the people that I admire and um, respect is um, is something, it's a role that I never thought that I'd be able to have or a position I'd ever find myself in. So, you know, I'm, um, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying all of this, but I, I, I am always looking for other opportunities. Well, here we go. This is it. The, the, this, this is where Snodcast comes into his own. I'm going to hand <laughs> over the reins. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, it's brilliant. Honestly, I love that. I do love this part. I'm not going to lie. I've um, I've got some some questions that we asked within the podcast, and um, the first one for you, Jermaine, is what's your three best moments in a Leeds United jersey? Three best moments. I think my first. Well, I'll go in order of. I'll go third first. Um, I would say it's the the winner. The goal I scored against Bristol Rovers at home. Yep, um, that would have to be third on my list, only because it's it was a moment that meant so so much to me um, through all the heartache that I've had, uh, and that was the first time I actually got to lead Leeds United out as a captain as well um, at Ellen Road. So that that holds a dear dear place, dear spot in my heart. So that would be number three. Two would be. The goal against Man United, um, again, the huge rivalry, what it means to, to score a goal against one of your biggest rivals, if not your big, the biggest rivals you, you've got, while wearing a Leeds United number nine shirt at their place as well, was, uh, was absolutely phenomenal. So for me, that's number two. And number one was uh, 14th of March, 2006. Uh, that was the day that I signed my first ever professional uh, contract at Leeds United, and that's that that moment is the most precious to me because it was the moment I'd realised 
I was actually finally going to, to live my dream and that's to become a professional football player. Um, so, you know, that, that place, I've got that picture hanging up in the house um, of yeah. me sitting with the, the baggiest tracksuit on, <laughs> messy as, grey Renault McGann, three hobcaps outside, scratches all over the door, big dent in the bumper. Snods, I'm there, I'm there with you, mate. I'm there with you. <laughs> 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 I bother off you. <laughs> see, see the um I, I just um I obviously I, I don't know about yourself, but I just want to touch on uh obviously you said there about signing the leads. Um and before I forget, um one of the Leeds fans um receiving the phone call for he actually signed the leads. Uh I guess a phone call from my agent and uh the he says to me, he says, Listen, two phone calls for you today. He says, one's for Gary McAllister for Leeds United and one's for Di Matteo for MK Dons. And I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, I've never spoke to anybody famous in my life. Like, what, what's happening here? You know what I mean? So, um, has a phone call with, with Gary Mack um, first. And Gary Mack says to me, he says, um, Snods, listen, how you doing? It's Gary Mack here. Uh, just a, just a wee, uh, phone call, just to touch base with you, with your, with your ideas. I says, I definitely like it in South. I've made my mind up, I like it in South. He says, well, I want to take you on trial for two weeks um, with the boys and all that, so you can get to see them and all that. And I'm thinking, trial? I was like, mm. right, all right. And I did all right at Livingston the season of four. Um, and I was like, right, okay, trial. I was like, all right, all right I'll, I'll I'll let you know. I've got a few phone calls and stuff today. Um, and uh, he's went, uh, no, it's Leeds United. And, I, and I've went, right, well, I'll be honest with you, I've spoke to Di Matteo. Um, and uh, I've got a three-year contract at MK Don, so I, I can't, I can't take the option. I, I'm sorry, I know it's Leeds United, I know you're Gary Mack, but I can't take the option. I'm sorry. Um, come off the phone. My agent rang me. He says, "How'd it go?" I says, "I haven't even spoke to Dimitel yet, and I'm telling Gary Mack I've got a three-year deal. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a three-year deal at Leeds United, right?" And he went, "Oh, good on you." He says, "Like that's what I was like, saying to you anyway. Like brilliant, you know." So in that mid he's Gary Mack must have been thinking, you know, the cheeky sod, I've I've just offered him a chance to get down to Leeds United and he's knocked me back. He's not back Leeds, like who is this? What's going on here? So I guess a phone call for Demi Taylor and he goes and he's uh, like but, but broke me English and he goes, Hi Robert, how you doing? He says, um I'm um a Demi Teo manager MK Don, he says, and uh he's, the first thing he said to me, Jimmy, and he goes, What do you run the hundred meters in? And I'm like, wow. I, I, honestly, I swear. And I was like, I, I went, I don't know. He says, I says, <laughs> I, says I don't know. Um, but I'll go down the park. There's a track down the bottom and I'll run it for you if you want. I'm like, <laughs> I've just knocked back Leeds. I can't knock back MK Dons now as well. So I've went, um, I'll run it down the thing. And he went, no, no, no. He says, uh, I like my wingers to be quick. And I knew then I was like, oh, no. Like, I have no chance because I'm no quick. So, I was like, right, okay, no worries. And he's like, oh, yeah, leave it with me, blah, blah, blah. So I came off the phone and I'm thinking, right, I've not got MK Dons. And I've not got Leeds United. I'm like, <laughs> how's this day went? And then, honestly, it was it was so weird. Like, Gary Mack rang up my agent and he's like, I like somebody with a bit of balls. Um, he tell me no. Um, uh, I was actually, um, I think it was, I'm going to give him a three year. I'm going to give him a four year because I want somebody like that at the club. And that was the that was the story. Yeah. Signed me leads. It was unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> And I, I was just doing a budget. I didn't have to run the hundred meters, didn't it? The <laughs> yeah, that was the start of your pranky career. You thought Gary Taylor was going to prank you? Oh, <laughs> unbelievable. So, no, the um, that's interesting to hear that. Yeah, that's a special feeling. That's it. That's one of the, the special feelings for me as well. But I'm going to move on, Jermaine, and I'm going to get right into it. Um, one thing we do within the podcast is your dream team five aside. Jermaine Beckford's dream team five aside. It could be any club uh, you played for, any level. Um, who is your main Beckfords? And you can't pick yourself. Uh, I know you need goals, but you're not picking yourself. The um, you're the manager. Uh, your B license needs to come out here. So the uh, Jermaine Beckfords five aside team. On you go. Right in goal, I would have Tim Howard. Um, 
when I was at Everton, unbelievable goalkeeper, communication outrageous, not bad with his feet either. So he would be goalkeeper. Um, oh, it's tight, man. It's tight. It's tight. At the back, I'd have Silver and Distan. Um, rapid, strong, read the game very well, distribution very good. Midfield, um, Leon Osman, Ross Barkley. When I was at um, Everton with both of them, Ross Barkley had just come back from from breaking his tib and fib. Yeah, um, he'd literally had one training session. And joking aside, as a as a kid as well, I think he was seventeen at the time. Best player on the park by a million miles, and it yeah. was his first or second training session back. Um, so I'd have to put Roscoe in there. Leon Osman, technically unbelievable feet like yeah. nobody. I've not seen anybody like that before. He just didn't have the pace to get away from players. A bit like you, Snods, mate. <laughs> I knew it was coming. It was coming. <laughs> um, so what's that? That's Tim Howard. That's one, two, three, four. And up top, this is a, it's a bit bad. It's not really any Leeds players in there. Louis yeah. Saha. Everton, Louis Saha. Yeah. Or Fulham, yeah. Louis Saha. He, good, good calls, man. Mm -hmm. good team, good team. His goal scoring exploits, his explosive speed, his strength, his core strength, his positioning, technically, uh, technically, he was unbelievable. And he's taught me so much about my game and things that I needed to improve on yep. to make myself a better finisher, a better hold up play, uh, and to, to help me with my speed as well. He, he helped me to go from. Um, like I've always been, I've been quite fortunate. I've always been quick, but he he got me the explosive pace off the mark, and that's the part that I I didn't realize I needed. Um, I mean, what kind of things did he do? Um, it's a lot of the core stuff in in terms of the gym. Um, so you'd have a you'd have a medicine ball, and you'd have your feet on the medicine ball. Your uh, just your right foot on the medicine ball. Your left foot is up in the air. So from the back, it sort of looks like your right foot's like that and the left foot's on the ball. And the left foot would just fire rapidly back and forward, rolling the ball back and forward as fast as you can. And it would just work your quads, your hamstrings. Um, I did that on both sides multiple times every single day. Uh, the plank as well, you know, when you're, you're on your elbows uh, and your toes on the floor, your body's in a straight line. He would he would start rocking side to side, going forward and backwards, up and down, just on his just for his core, and he would do that for nine, ten, eleven minutes in a row, and that would be one set, and he'd do nine, ten, eleven sets after training. You know, his his core was unbelievably strong, um, so that's something that that he brought to me. Lots of lots of squats as well at at, um, at Finch Farm. There's a a little hill. It's like um, maybe about 10, 12 feet higher. He used to sprint up it every day before training and sprint down it, uh, sprint up and down it every day before training a couple of times um, to, to build up his quad muscles, to build up his hamstring muscles um, and to work on his core as well. Honestly, a lot of uh, Louis' game was based around core strength and, and core mobility and I brought that into my game and I, I feel it helped me out massively. Yep. So that's why I'd, I'd put him in there as well. Yeah. Very good, very good team. Very, very good team. The I didn't say to you, Everton, best team. I said to you. <laughs> <laughs> every player, you're just Everton. raging, you're no made it. <laughs> Hello, this is uh, Luciano Vecchio, uh, my lead United and team dream fire side uh, had to be in the goalkeeper, Capres Michael, uh, center half, uh, Patrick Norbo, in the middle, Johnny Hauson, and two in front, uh, Robert Nogras and Jermaine Beckford. Moving on to you, Phil. Uh, you've, asked, you, you, you've, you've probably asked many people uh, the questions over the years, but you know, as time goes on, mate, I'm going to I'm going to ask you now. I'm going to yeah. uh, I'm going to start off with your. Um, 
five best moments for you when you joined Leeds, since you joined Leeds, your five best moments for um, your connection with Leeds United? Beckford, Bristol Rovers, obviously. One of those yeah. days where you celebrate in the press box when you're not really allowed to, but you, you can't Perfect. help yourself. I, I, know it, I know it didn't count for anything, but Becchio against Millwall in the playoffs at home, that goal, yeah. um, loudest celebration I've I've ever heard. Um, Johnny House in a way at Carlisle, 2008. Yeah. Again, didn't count for anything in the end, but it was just a, a fantastic moment. Um, Leeds destroying Stoke in Bales' first game where he just sat there and went, this, that is so impressive. It's almost unbelievable after about five weeks in the club. And then the last one was Hernandez away at Swansea about two weeks ago. That Sunday game, yep. balling off the post, 89th minute. You, that was that was when you knew they'd done it. You knew they were up after that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, um, it's, uh, I think probably within those, th th those moments, I, I think even touching on a, a few of my um, best moments in a, a Leeds United jersey there as well when, Sort of Jermaine's um Jermaine's goal, the, the Bristol Rovers, and then uh I think listen to Jermaine's ones as well. It's um it just brings back so many memories. So now we're gonna move on, Phil, for now for your best five aside team. What's Phil Hayes dream team well, five aside team? Leeds United. I, 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 I tell you what I'll do. I'll I'm gonna I'll take out. I'm oh. gonna start making substitution. Leon Osman is done. You're in. <laughs> 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 Do you know what he's done there? I'll be honest with you, he just looked at the FIFA pace. Leon Osman or Snods, he went, Snods is a wee bit quicker. Get him, man. Get him, man. No, good lad. Good, good lad. He's buckled. He's buckled. <laughs> oh, brilliant, man. It's well done, mate. Love it. Well, well listen, I'm, I'm going to mix this up between um, the famous Hart and Midlothian and the Leeds players I've seen over the past okay. 16 years. Um, so, goalkeeper is going to be Antti Niemi who yep. is still my favourite keeper of all time. Um great, great reactions. Yeah. I, I heard he was finished, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's only 28. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> Jermaine, have you ever heard that one? <laughs> I've got to say, it's a niche joke, that one. You, you want me to fill you in on that one, Jermaine? Yeah, uh, please. please. Yeah, yeah, the radio, wait till you hear this. The radio phone-in up in Scotland. Um, and they're, they're asking people to phone in and make suggestions <laughs> for um, for the Scotland squad, okay? So, yeah. Antti Niemi from Finland. This, this Hearts fan phones up and says, I think Niemi for Scotland. I think Niemi needs to play for Scotland. Silence on the end of the phone. The guys in the studio go, Niemi's Finnish. Boy on the end of the phone goes, he's not finished. He's 28. <laughs> they're, saying to, they're saying to him, no, no, he's, no, he's, he's Finnish. And, and this guy's going, he's not, I'm telling you, I've watched him all season. He's not finished. He's in his prime and he needs to play. Oh, man. Brilliant. Absolutely. Oh, Classic. Classic. Start, start for your dream team. Go on. But he, nice even, though he's, even though he's finished, he makes it into my team. Um, I'll play Calvin Phillips in front of him because if you've got Calvin, you don't need anybody else defensive on the pitch at all. Yeah. Um, I, I've been toying between Snodgrass and Gradle, but I'll go for, I'll go for Snodgrass. I'll obviously play Hernandez. Um, left side, I'll go for John Cahoon, um, ex Hearts winger, 1980s. And up front, as much as I should pick John Robertson, I will definitely go for Jermaine. Good Just choice. to keep the peace. Good choice. Keep the peace. <laughs> we, we can, <laughs> us at Legion United, Jermaine, we can deal with Anthony Emmy. We'll deal with him. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. 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 The thing is, I think that's a six a side team. Spill him. Off. I think that's a six a side team. He oh, needs no, a sub I... as well, boy. He needs a sub. He needs a sub. He needs I'll a sub. Yeah. He's five. We'll stick Robo on the bench in that case at rescue us in, in injury time. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. No worries. No, okay. listen, that was that was brilliant. Superb. Loved that. Brilliant stuff. Well, that's only part nice I wanted on. in the show. That was, that was <laughs> the best part. That's the best part. I've got the three is could stay on here and, and see. Um, there's obviously been a big Scottish connection, um, you know, with Leeds over the over the years as well. One, why does the Leeds fans take to the Scottish people so well? And two, um, Liam Cooper is obviously the captain. How do you think he'll fare in the, um, the the English Premier League next year as well? 
I think mainly so, because so many of the Scottish players have been so good. Like, you know, the, the crowd, the first batch who came down, and there were some others. I mean, there was a player called Tom Jennings back in the 20s and 30s who's still one of the top scorers. He was from um, Ayrshire, uh, Ayrshire or, or closer closer north to Glasgow, but um, was was a top player at the time. But, like, when you start going through Bremner and even before him, Bobby Collins, Lorimer, you know, all all of these guys, the, 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 some of the best players that have ever played for the club and, and by a mile, the most successful and I don't know why it just seems to work with Scottish players at Leeds they, they seem to get their scouting spot on when they go up there in the main um, and it has it's been a it's been a long history like that oh and Cooper and Cooper as well I, I think Cooper will do okay I do I mean he was he probably fell into that category of players that people were unconvinced about when or uncertain about when Bielsa first came in but like so many of them he's improved massively like his, his passing is so much better his reading of the game is so much better the, the defensive mistakes have, have dwindled down to a small number and I think beyond that he's been a fine fine captain he really has been fantastic captain in, in the background and has done a lot to, to keep the squad as, as neat and as tight as it is so I, I think he'll do okay yeah, That's good Well Jermaine I think me and Robert have, have you know, over the weeks, um, we've always had a, uh, a positive mental health message from, you know, people with mental health and well-being. What would yours be to anyone out there who um, may be struggling at this moment in time? Uh, my, my message would be, we all go through issues. We all have things that, that we aren't necessarily happy with or that aren't necessarily going our way. The worst thing you can do is keep it bottled up and keep it to yourself and think that you can get over these things by yourself. No one person is strong enough to get through the issues that we all have um, on a daily basis by themselves. Open up, don't be afraid. It's a, it's a show of strength to be able to, to open up and speak to somebody and, and get them to help you. You know, Asking for help is, is no, there's nothing negative in that. I ask for help on a daily basis on a, on a number of different things, number of different factors that, uh, that affect me. Um, and, you know, I, I'm, much, I'm a much more rounded and much stronger person mentally and physically for asking for that help. So I would say, look, just don't be afraid. You won't be judged. Yeah, perfect. Well and, yourself, well and yourself, And yourself, Exactly the same. Yeah, it's, it is it's so important to ask for help if you need it and to speak to people if you need it. And I think important to remind yourself constantly that, you know, if you are suffering, you're not the only person that is. It's very easy to look at other people and assume that everybody else is happy, everybody else has got it made, nobody else is, is feeling the same. Um, but a lot of people out there who, who suffer in the same way, and I think probably more so after the past three or four months being stuck in the house with nowhere to go and, and all the things that you used to do and not being quite so available. So, yeah, like, like Jermaine says, Ask for help and don't be embarrassed to ask for help. Yep, yeah, great Probably. words. I think um, you know it's, it's been similar messages to you know everybody. So, but you know when you've got a lot of different people saying it, it does make a difference. And I think that's mm. one thing we've found in the podcast, Robert, that that has been the case. The amount of people that's got in contact saying um, you no, know it's, it's helped terrible. so many people. But um, oh, it's been brilliant. I, Loved it. It has been, and I'd just like to thank um, the two of you. I know. Your other strike partner didn't make it um, because the <laughs> Wi-Fi is so rubbish. But um, it's been I've I've loved. I mean, I mean that's nearly two hours. It's it's been fantastic um, listening to you going through the, the the old Leeds archives and and you know for me being Scottish and I mean I've obviously played against the club a couple of times, but you know it's a massive club. I'm delighted that it's back in the top flight. Um, I'm sure Robert yep. will be looking forward to to playing against um, you know Leeds next year as well, and hopefully um, it's just the start of a success story, and both years can be part of that and in different ways. Um, you know, going forward, and I wish you all the best in the future. And thanks very much for coming on and taking the time out to, to speak to us on the Lockdown Tactics yeah. podcast. Well, thanks, thanks for having us on, guys. Thank you. Thank you, lads. Cheers. Thanks very much. Thank you. Cheers, boys. Well, Snods, I thoroughly enjoyed that, mate. Um, you know, looking back at Leeds, um, you know, when you were down there as a, as a young boy, as such, and, and how you've um, you know became a Premier League player, and, and looking back at the stories and, and the you know, talking about what it was to be a winner at Leeds and come up through the, you know, from that first division into the championship and, and you know, yep. play in front of the passionate fans. And you've, you've touched on it yourself. You're delighted to see such a huge club back in the Premier League. I'm sure you'll be looking forward to, to you know, going back to Ellen Road next year. And, um, you know, I thoroughly enjoyed, um, you know, the conversation. It was it was good. Enjoyed it. Boy, it was, uh, do you know what, mate? It brought back loads of memories there that um, I've, I've probably no 
you know, spoke about in a in a long time and and seeing Phil and Jermaine there and I know that Jano's signal problems, he's um I think it was his uh his sideburns were um affecting the, the signal. He's uh, he's Gucci he's he's Gucci flip flops probably in holiday as well when they're you, ready you've, you've spoken now about Gucci a few times. What's the story behind that? Just these um when he was at, uh when he came to Norwich he bought loads of um, he always bring everything Gucci and he used to have his Gucci belt as well isn't it? No, Gucci has shown it so I was like the boys this guy used to wear like, baggy jeans and that at Leeds when I, when I first arrived in the season then, and I went perfect I've got the name for him it's Gucci Anno and it stuck <laughs> and everybody was just calling everybody was just calling Gucci him Gucci Anno so no he was about to come in and obviously as I said he's no he's no joined us so that's that's fine the boys were terrific and it was it was great to talk about uh all the Leeds days past um and present now we such a great achievement with, with them with Bielsa getting into the Premier League and how, how well we've done over the last few years. So yeah, boy Dave, really enjoyed it. We hope you all enjoyed it. Hope you had a fantastic time. Tune in. Um to the podcast over the next few weeks. Uh, we are ending the season, I believe, Chris, and, and, and get into another season. Um, uh, over the next few weeks, we'll have some big announcements um, coming up. So make sure you tune in to our Apple podcast, our Spotify, our Podbeam, uh, all our YouTube, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, all the videos and stuff will be on there, our Instagram, our Twitter, our Facebook, um, all the many platforms uh, that we've done in such a short space of time. Um, yes, so listen, tune in, uh, make sure you subscribe and we will see you uh, next week. Thank you. Never cheers, goodbye.